Jaguar E-Types and Porsche Carreras. Years ago these cars were brand new, but now they can be found in junkyards all over the country. So why should these cars be left to rot? Many people ask that exact question every day, but those people give us these wonderful, good as new, restored classics. Restoring a car can be tough, with lots of funds and spare time needed. But still, enthusiasts and mechanics love bringing cars back to life. But why do they do it? Hidden in the Essex countryside is Riddlesdale Brothers, a small independent garage home to Howard Watts, a Porsche specialist and keen restorer. Howard has an extensive collection of classic cars, which has taken many years to build and is known worldwide. But how did Howard start? Um, really it was from my father. My father was in the motor trade and ever since the age of eight really I've been interested in cars and he had a friend called Jim Jeery who worked for British Oxygen and Jim taught me how to weld and then it led to welding on cars because I got proficient with it um, and really it's gone from there. First project was a 1957 Morris Thousand um, I bought it to the disgust of my father and I paid £30 for it. Of course I was a little bit naive but I knew what needed to be done. Basically it's all about preparation. If you can prepare it properly, strip it right out, get it down to its bare bones and then do a proper job. It's all about quality of product and the Porsche is probably the best put together car in the world. Porsches really were beautifully made, beautifully engineered, everything was logically put together and I just fell in, in love with them. This 1971 Porsche 911 is a brilliant example of the quality Howard spoke of. After 40 years on the road, this car still looks brand new and it absolutely flies. The amount of time and skill required for a successful restoration is immense, with many technical challenges likely to test you. Many garages offer a restoration service. This is to remove the risk of error. Riddlesdale Brothers has its own garage which can provide such services, carried out by Howard and his Porsche trained mechanics. I always dreamt about having this garage because it is in a fantastic location in the middle of a picturesque village and it's been in continuous business since 1900. I introduced the Porsches and specialist car uh, servicing and restoration work and the business is flourishing 10 years on. One garage in particular, run by mechanic Ed China, is now the setting of the Discovery Channel show Wheeler Dealers. Having always been very hands-on, Ed has created various crazy creations in the past with his mechanical expertise landing him the spot on Wheeler Dealers. I started with Lego many, many moons ago, and uh, that sort of started me with obviously all kind of just building things, taking things apart, putting them back together again. So to be honest, I mean, it, I kind of always really wanted to, to play around with things. I, understood, I kind of get how things work, and then kind of got into the car thing, I guess, when I was doing my A-levels. I uh, wanted to go down to the beach after one of my A-levels, had to go and buy a car, so we bought a Beetle, which was fantastic. But then, on the way back, it broke down, and then I suddenly realised I had no money left, and so I had to find an old socket set, which happened to be Imperial, which is not good on a metric car, and then started getting involved, and it really just when it kind of started from there. I just got more and more involved with taking cars apart and putting it back together again. So it's uh, kind of a nice gradual kind of into this kind of game. I think the uh, I think doing wheeler dealers and we've done like I think nearly a hundred cars now. The interesting part of it is actually just finding out how other people do this or attack the same problem, and it just helps with the whole idea of problem solving. Because again, 
sometime in the future I'm just going to go, oh, that's an idea. I could kind of borrow that from that car or whatever. So, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I think, um, I actually think the biggest temptation, if you're, if you're starting restoring cars yourself, is actually to give up too early, frankly. I think that's the thing that probably everybody gets to the point of thinking, well, I'm not sure if I, I'm confident in doing this, whatever, and then they get scared of it. Um, so I think when you're doing your own restoration, um, it's just to do one thing at a time, and don't be afraid to ask anybody else you know, how to do it, but obviously it's also having people to have a chat to try and keep you spurred on. I think that's the, the so this, you can avoid the temptation of like, no, I can't handle it. And there's always people out there, professionals, who can do the job really, really well. And okay, it might cost a few quid, but actually might save you some money. Perhaps another temptation is to bite off more than you can chew. So you can, it's really easy to take something apart. And it's often a lot harder to put it back together in the right order, the right way, and do a good job of it. So I think, ease yourself in, and then you're always going to be fine. I think the the satisfaction you get from, um, you know, say, restoring a car or even looking after a sort of a classic car or even a kit car for that matter, um, it, I guess it's different for lots of different people. Some people love cleaning, love keeping things all pristine. Other people like getting really, really dirty and grimy and sort of getting an engine running sweetly. Perhaps we're not too worried about the engine, you know, the bodywork. Perhaps other people love bodywork but aren't so worried about mechanical stuff. So I think you need to find what it is that, you know, makes you most happy and then eventually you'll find your passion, you'll find the thing you want and then, then follow that dream. It's clear that a lot of people enjoy restoration, but when you've done all that work on a car, what do you get from it? Fulvio Musi is a racing driver, normally found behind the wheel of the prior step Lotus Exige, and is the test driver of an Italian supercar restored to racing spec. I started my career in racing in single seaters, racing against the likes of Lewis Hamilton, Paul De Rista. Uh, unfortunately, budgets very quickly meant we weren't able to keep up with the, with the trend and, uh, and keep running at the front, however competitive we were. Uh, I then moved across to tin tops, touring cars. We raced in the Clio Cup and the Sat Cooper Championship, a very competitive run, uh, ran very well in those championships, and, and thoroughly enjoyed the racing from the from the tin tops and, and touring car side of things. Um, so I met Terry uh, down at Brands Hatch on a track day. Um, I actually took Terry for his ARDS license. He came to Brands Hatch to uh, take the test to get his race license so he could start competing. Uh, known Terry for about a year and um, he started testing this car, the Di Tommaso Pantera. So it's a Ford 351 engine running at 450 brake plus when running correctly. Uh, when I jumped in this car, in comparison to things like the Genetta, it just blew my mind. It's such a fast car, uh, it runs so much torque that you honestly feel it's going to start churning the tarmac up from underneath you. We've uh, got some aerodynamics on the car that the, car the team have fitted on the front and at the back we've got quite a large rear wing. We've now fitted a limited slip diff to the rear to help with the grip, the traction out of the corners, help the car a little bit more drivable on the power. We also put a quicker steering rack on. We found that the car was, with the rack that it had in the ratio for the amount you turn the wheel versus the amount the wheels were actually turning, was not quite enough. So, especially at Brands Hatch, for example, on the Indy circuit, you've got a quite a tight hairpin. We needed what we call a faster rack. So essentially, for every bit of input on the wheel, it's actually doing more work to the wheels for you, meaning at the hairpin, I'm literally turning maybe a quarter of the lock round, and I'm getting all the way around quite a tight hairpin. So it's a very rare car, so there's a lot of things things that uh, you have to work through with these cars to develop them to make them capable to run at the, uh, the level that they are running at. Although restoring a car can be a tough process, it's clear to see that it is enjoyed by all involved, from enthusiasts to racing drivers. And as for the finished product, is it worth all the money and the long hours? You'll get the same answer from anybody you ask. Yes, 